All right, so this is the last of the videos. And what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a curtain system for the tower using adaptive components. And there's actually a little bit, or should I say quite a bit of um, kind of facade rationalization that we need to do before we can get there. Uh, but we will we'll work on that together. So what I'm going to do is, so I've actually got my, these are my curved floor slabs. What I did previously, which I, I, I kind of forgot, is I am gonna offset these in a little bit so that they're not right up against the property line. And again, this is kind of just more of like a little tweak thing. But the nice thing about having this be parametric is I can come here and do it here and I'm going to do an X, Y plane, plug that into the plane, and then I'm going to make this a, um, let me actually do this quick. Um, actually, I don't need to do that. So, um, and then I'm, I'm going to make this negative, and then we'll make this Maybe we'll just offset it like two feet for now. And then this is what we're gonna plug into here. So it's gonna trickle through and it's gonna update our columns, it's gonna update everything and our floor slabs. But what it means is that now that kind of tower is set in a little bit. So when we build the facade and build it out a little bit, we're not gonna be kind of going over the property line. And that's one, again, that's kind of like one of the major amazing beautiful things about what we're doing here is we can always go back and tweak these things and then instead of going having to fix this all in Revit a million different places or whatever we can just have it update all automatically. So let me go back into here and um, what is this? This is oh yeah that we have turned off um, okay, cool. All right, so then what, um, I'm noticing that this wasn't going through, but sometimes you just need to regenerate the definition, but we'll do that towards the end. All right, so let me find what I wanted to do. Okay, so I wanted to use my um, curves that we were using for the, um, the curved floor slabs. And I want them all, I don't want to split it. So I'm going to grab these. We use them for the columns. We're going to use them again for this facade. So I'm going to pull this up to here. <clears throat> and I could just loft these because I want to, I'm going to show you again a different type of workflow. I'm going to use a, a, a curved surface. So if I loft all these, you're going to see I have some things like these, this this is not great. It's It, it kind of comes back here at the top. I don't want that inconsistency and in that it's, it's a little bit messy. So I'm going to show you a trick to kind of get this back into being um, a little bit cleaner. Before we do that, let's offset this back out like a foot off the facade just so that we don't, um, you know, we don't clash with this floor slab um, and X, Y. So as you see, there's a lot of kind of like offsetting in, offsetting out. I've pulled out all the parameters that you need in the finished definition that I'm gonna give you guys. So some of these things you might need to go in and clean up and pull back to the front. So dimension, let's just do zero, one, two. I think one's good, so let's just keep it at one. All right, so that's that. Now, there's two things I wanna do here. The first is I wanna get it so that the seam for all of these is in the same place. This is a trick that's a little bit, um, feels time consuming and like a lot, of, a lot of work for very little result, but it's actually very important that the seam of where these start is in the same place. And if I was to do the end point of this, you would see that it's actually all 
pretty good that it's close to the same spot. So you know what? I'm just going to roll with it. It's good. It's good for, for what we need it for. There's a trick which I do in the other definition, which I'll show you quickly, and I won't walk you through it all, but basically what you have to do is find where all of these intersect. You create basically like a big plane from the start and then find the intersection and then adjust the seam so it's all in the same place. But because our seams are, you know what? I'm, I've, I've talked myself back into doing it properly because I think it's important in the event that you change the geometry and the seams aren't really cooperating you want to kind of brute force and make them do what you want them to do so let's let's do it I'm going to do a list item I'm going to grab the first curve so remember offset graphs everything so let me flatten this I got the first curve I'm going to do what's called a perp frame the perp frame gives me a, a, a point on the curve that's perpendicular to it. I'm going to do a slider. And if I do this, you'll see I, I have it, but it's kind of just really only moving within this one little foot. I have to reparameterize this. And then if I slide this, it'll come along the whole curve. I kind of want it to be on this back flat side here. So right there is probably good. So I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to do a line. I'm going to um, do a line SDL. And my start is that frame. The direction is actually, I want it to be like the Y axis of this frame, or the X. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to deconstruct the plane. I'm going to grab the X and then I have a little curve coming off that. I'm going to make this um, let's make it like five feet. I'm going to do this exact same thing in the negative direction. So I'm just going to do a negative for this same X vector. And then I, I want this to just be one curve. So I'm going to just take the endpoints of each curve. And do like a line AB. So now I have that. I'm going to extrude this up. Five hundred feet. So another trick, which I actually just recently learned, so I'm adapting it in, is you press slash slash, and then you type what the panel you want the panel to say. So that's a shortcut rather than saying panel equals. I just learned that, so I'm trying to kind of like integrate it in. So now all I'm going to do is just move this down like five feet. So let's do Z. Let's do our new slash slash trick slash slash five. So now I have this, oh, I want this to be negative. So I could also come in here and make this negative too. That's another way to do it. There we go. So there's that. Let me hide all this other stuff. So now what I can do is do um, an intersection, physical, I have surface curve intersection. So my surface is going to be this, and my curves are going to be all these flattened offset curves. So what I want to do now is I want to just adjust the seam, which is this. And I'm going to take all my curves, which are, again, this flattened set of curves from here. And the T for the new seam, I'm going to take this T here and plug that in. And 
this needs to be, let's graft this and graft this. So now we have 26 branches, 26 branches. We have these new reparameterized curves. Now what I'm going to do is divide these curves a bunch of times. This I'm actually not going to do by a dimension. I'm just going to do a slider that equals like 200 or let's say 150, 200, 250. I want this to be able to do like a really kind of um, refined curve that I can have a lot of control over. And so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to divide these And then I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to interpolate these curves. So I have these curves that now are starting at the right place and they have the exact same amount of control points. Because if I loft them and they don't have the same control points, it's going to it's going to cause problems. I want to close this curve. So now I have these closed curves. And then I'm going to loft this. So I have to flatten these. So now I have my sort of like really refined, clean, closed surface here for my tower that is offset from the edge the seam is perfect remember the seam was kind of all over the place before we have a perfect seam running up here which means we're not going to get funkiness with how it divides as it goes around okay <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is go back to my f um, lunchbox friend and I'm going to use this quad panel I'm going to plug in my surface the number of U divisions is um, let me try that that should be um, that's the vertical I actually want this to align with my floor slabs so what I'm going to do is I'm going to count I'm going to flatten this list here and I'm going to do a list length I'm going to do a list length and then I've got my 26 values so let's see if we plug that in there Yeah, so my curves are lining up perfectly with my, my panels are lining up perfect. Oh, no, they're not. They are slightly off. So what that means is I probably have to add in, um, do I have to add in one? I think I have to add in one or maybe subtract one. Let me see. I think they're exactly in the right spot. Let's see. Yeah, so they're they're lining up exactly. And then for my Vs, I'm going to actually do like a lot a lot of Vs. So, we can get this to be like a really sort of like the more of these we have the more curvy the facade's going to be because it's going to be a curved panel but it's going to be made up of like four corners that are all connected straight so the edges are not going to be curved but the glass itself will be so now we've got like a cool sort of pattern for what this is going to be I'm now going to do what's called an adaptive component which this is again could 
be a series of videos on this, but we're going to do kind of like a really brief intro to it. What I need is I'm going to show you what I'm what I need. I'm going to come into to Revit and I'm going to make what's called an adaptive family. So if I go into file new family I'm going to do English Imperial and I'm going to do a curtain panel pattern based. So what this gives me is actually like a little template for building a pattern based family. I'm going to use a rectangle or a square. If I click on the frame, you can see there's actually like all sorts of different panels systems you can use. So if we wanted to do like a diagrid or a rhomboid, we could do that. But mine's like most represented by a rectangle. So I'm going to start with the, like the shape here that is most representative of what my panel is. Even though they're not all perfect rectangles, they're essentially distorted rectangles. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of other things you could dive into. I'm going to change the scale just so it's a little bit more legible. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to, and again, there's lots of things of resources on how to build these things. I'm going to do a quick panel, but I'm going to draw a rectangle, but I actually want to draw it on this surface. So I'm going to click on that surface. I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to make this, draw it. Let's make it like six inches deep by like 1.5 or no, let's do two inches wide. And then what I'm going to do is click on this and this and go to create form and it's going to just do a sweep. So the way Revit complex modeling works is a little bit strange, but it's, it's like you just click on the two objects and you click create form and it tries to figure out what you want to do. So like next, what I want to do is create a panel of glass that sits in here. So I'm going to click on the chain of walls, just these reference lines. And I'm going to go create form and use the space bar to cycle through possible forms. So you press space. You can either do like a flat panel. This is a big extrusion. I want an extrusion. This is bigger than I want, but I can come in here and click on the form. And I'm going to set this to be negative one inch. And I'm going to set this to two inches. And I know that this is what I want from just doing this. But what it's going to give me is um, this kind of form that's down here. And I'm actually going to make this a void. So I'm going to go from solid to void. And you'll notice that it'll cut out this. And what I have to do is actually just create another one, kind of the exact same thing. Oh, that didn't work. Hold on. Create form. There we go. negative one, two inches. So now I have, oh, it went to two feet, didn't it? Negative one inch, there we go. All right, so now you can assign like basic materials in here. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna make this just sort of like a default material and I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna make this glass. So now I have this like kind of rectilinear simple curtain panel. I'm gonna save this and call this adaptive panel underscore two. And I'm going to load this project into the family. Oh, sorry, load this family into the project. It's not gonna do anything because I don't have anything set up for that. But now if I come in here, what I can do is do in Revit, and I always forget where it is. So you know what, let me just do adaptive, add component adaptive. Let me see where this is. It's in Revit build. So this, I'm going to do this and it's going to actually, um, think for a while but before I do that I actually need points so if you look at that family if we go back into it it actually has 
the way that the adaptive families work is it takes these four points and it actually has them listed. So if I click on this, this is point one, number one, point two, point three, point four. And I have to feed it a list of points that corresponds to that, like clockwise motion, in order for it to do the right thing. So let me go back into Rhino. What I'm going to do is do deconstruct BREP. And I'm going to get all of the vertices. And as you, you can see, it's 8,700 panels, so it's a lot. But they're all broken down into these lists of four. And the way that Rev, Rhino works as well is it will do them sort of clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on which way the surface is facing. So I can actually just use those points and plug them in, and it will work with those. And then I'm going to do this, plug this in, and it's going to think for quite some time. So I'm going to pause. But I can go into category, um, why is it giving me? All categories. This seems to be, why is this giving me weird choices here? Let me grab one of these type components from up here. I don't know why that one was giving me. Right click on this. So yeah, something weird is happening here with the way that it's interpreting the families. So I'm just gonna restart. I'm gonna save everything and restart Revit. I've seen this before. It's just the way that, yeah, there's something weird that's going on. Um, failed to save. Yeah, this, uh, let me do a save as. There might be, you know what sometimes happens? Let me see. Sometimes there's like an active, it, I think it's, you know what? It's because this is open. That's my active Revit document and there's, there's not other types in there. So it's not able to find the type that it needs to find. So let me see if I come back in here. Yeah, so this is working again. So let me save this. It still wants me to do another one. That's okay. Let me just save this as a number two. Okay. My types are working now, though. So I'm going to actually just delete this, do a, do a, a clean type component. Right click. Um... I can go to curtain panels and then adaptive panel two is the first one that shows up. I'm going to take this, plug it into here. It's going to think and think and think. I'll pause. I'll come back to this when it's done and fingers crossed it will be deploying this adaptive component. But before I do that, just to kind of reiterate, this is an interesting workflow where you are using Rhino to sort of do the surfacing and the rationalization and determining kind of where the panels actually go, but then you draw them natively in Revit using Revit's built-in adaptive component to get a result which is sort of like a good hybrid between a native curtain panel and a uh, import. Okay, we're back and success. Uh, here's all of those components, adaptive panels that are coming directly in. You'll see they look a little bit different than a ge geometry direct shape um, in terms of kind of their parameters, but you can do some phasing. You can like flip the adaptive component if it is facing the wrong way. Uh, but it's pretty cool and it's pretty clean. And actually, um, we got some errors in here about... Um, automatically resolved. I'm not sure, delete dimension. It looks like there might've been something with the dimension, I, I don't know. It's, I'm not too worried about it because it doesn't look like there's any visible errors in here. And so it's cool because we have our kind of curved adaptive panel all set in here. So last thing is, let me go in here and, um, you know, let's um, 
let's turn on our columns, which because I, I don't have this cleanly organized, we have to just find that uh, this gate. What I do, I put this back here. So let's turn this on. Got our columns in there. But once we deploy this, then basically we've got all our geometry updated in in Revit. And so, you know, this is like a really good starting point for a project, you know, with something you could then go in and do planning in Revit. Um, <clears throat> you know, this is the point where I might uh, get all of the, um, get all of the, um, the plans set, you know, the levels, get those working. The, these, um, it seems like these walls don't want to cooperate. Um, but let me see if I can sort of like disable this, then like update. Um, I think if we recomputed this, it would work. I'm going to, I'm going to try that, but I'm going to disable the adaptive component thing. So I can just select this. Um, I'll just going to disable all of this here because it's going to take forever. But if I recompute this whole thing, I think our <clears throat> curtain wall should show up again. Might take a minute or two. Let me pause and come back. Yes, yeah, so I recomputed everything and... Um, it seems like my curves at the ground floor, this this is not working. So all this surface stuff is. So if I go back in here and let's see where that's occurring. That is, this is the face-based one. Um, there's something, oh, the level here is seems to be Maybe because um, it's resetting the levels every time, it's losing that association. But if you come and just set that, then it should be working okay. So because it's updating the levels over and over again, that's losing its association. But if once you set that level component to not update every time, you should be good. But yeah, so that's our... Uh, tutorial on how to get a bunch of different facade types, a um, some curvature, some floor slabs, and some columns into Revit um, using adaptive workflows, using parametric workflows, having everything update as needed. And again, you could go back and adjust any of these parameters. I'm sure you could break it, but I would encourage you to test, play around, see what you can and can't do. Uh, how, what the limits you are, what limits you can push it to and so on. Cause there's a lot of flexibility in here, uh, but that's it. Thank you.